What was that marvelous story uh, uh, that an Israeli amateur with marvelous radio equipment had monitored the entire U.S. Uh, uh, attempt to rescue the hostages uh, and kept his mouth quiet during the time? Yes. But, but Frank, I also will say I, I've had a chance to fly three times, and uh, there's nothing that I ever said that wasn't heard by uh, you and the rest of the people in this country around the world. You've never had any fact, reason, huh? <laughs> matter of fact, there were a couple things I said by accident that I really wish someone hadn't heard. But uh, it, that's true. For the most part, uh, almost 100% of all our communications is uh, totally accessible to anybody and everybody all the time. And certainly on launch it is, Gene. Uh, well, no, we no, are. Yes, no need to gentlemen. conceal anything on launch. Uh, no private comms. We are, according to my calculations, about uh, seven minutes away from the uh, first uh, television transmission from uh, space when we see the, uh, the opening of the uh, cargo bay doors, that 60-foot-long cargo bay. The doors uh, must open and must close in space if the space shuttle is to be uh, operational and uh, fully functional. And the first uh, television transmission of that operation should come at about... Uh, one hour and 36 minutes into the flight, and we are now one hour and 28 minutes and 40 seconds into the flight. So we still have some time as the astronauts cross the Pacific and move up toward the southern coast of the United States. Actually, that uh, mission, uh, or that uh, operation of uh, opening and closing the payload uh, doors, cargo bay doors, will take place over the uh, continental United States. So we're going to continue with our coverage of the Space Shuttle Columbia in just a moment. would be up on top there, and I, my monitor is not quite good enough so that I can't quite read it, but that flickering signal up there should give us AOS, AOS meaning acquisition of signals. You're yes, there we are, from see here, 46 Roy. seconds, there we are, that's the mission control map itself. About three quarters of the way down it says AOS, that's the one, 39, now we know when we should have contact. Right. Huh? 39 more seconds, the reason that these, these doors could warp, that's why they have to open so carefully. <laughs> doors could warp or the spacecraft could warp, preventing the doors from closing neatly and cleanly after they're open. From ground zero to the speed of sound in less than 30 seconds. The space shuttle went uh, eight miles up in one minute flat. The largest manned spacecraft ever launched. First winged spaceship ever. First reusable spaceship. Roger. And the first manned spacecraft launched with solid rocket boosters. Columbia, Houston, your go throttle up. Roger, go throttle. Solid rocket boosters were um, after they had helped get the spacecraft off the pad dropped away on both sides. That was the scene as they did so. Began uh, their descent, the uh, solid rocket booster containers, the containers themselves parachuted back down into the Atlantic Ocean and are now in the process of being recovered. The large external tank, which the spacecraft piggybacked on uh, into, uh, toward its orbit, long after the uh, solid rocket boosters had dropped away, that tank is not reusable. The last word was that uh, it had come down in the Indian Ocean in various pieces uh, within a few miles of where it was designed to come down. And uh, from that point on, the spacecraft Columbia was headed uh, toward its uh, orbital height, its initial orbital height of about 152 statute miles up, 130 nautical miles, then went into its first orbit around the Earth, which is uh, what it's in the process of doing now. I'm that. Right the right door, door open. open. Who's the We can see a little gas uh, floating out of the, uh, out of the payload bay, but uh, nothing really all that significant. Sometimes it's a little hard to understand the crew. Well, the door looks like he's doing his thing. Roger, Columbia, and uh, we're just trying this one on this band only. And we ought to be waiting for TV here any moment uh, from the spacecraft, and we ourselves can see these doors open. A couple of minutes, I think, yes, uh, Gene. Uh, Columbia, we'd like a voice check on uh, air ground one only, please. 
You want us to come down on this round one? No, just the fact you're getting us is fine. That should do it. Okay, we're getting it fine. The uh, starboard door is open uh, on Columbia. We're at uh, one hour, 33 minutes mission the last time. Standing by for the television transmission. They're doing this over the United States so they get the maximum coverage. We've got the whole communications and then, of course, video coverage, television coverage from the time they hit California until the time they cross out over Bermuda, mm -hmm. which certainly gives us an advantage in, uh, in monitoring those doors. And should they have any problems with it, of course, Mission Control uh, can uh, an anticipate the solution to those problems. Well, the starboard bay door is open now. That's been confirmed. The starboard door, that's the right-hand door uh, if you're facing forward on the uh, shuttle spacecraft. And it opens quite wide. It opens like a big clamshell. It just uh, doesn't open a 90 degree angle. I don't know exactly the full swing of that door, but it, it opens so that when you take payloads out or put them in, the doors are com almost completely laying open against the side, uh, the fuselage of the shuttle. I, I really hope we get a good view of that. I anticipate a, a, uh, a good picture here very shortly. And that's important, too, because of the uh, cooling requirements of the spacecraft. Extremely it? important at this time. The radiators uh, are used for cooling, and uh, they are the primary source of, uh, of cooling uh, uh, all the equipment, the electronic equipment, and, of course, keeping the, uh, the atmosphere in which the crew is working in cool. So it is essential. Now, they do have one door open, which means they have partial cooling, because I believe they have radiators on both, uh, right. on both panels. There are four doors, though. But in order to get the... In order to complete the mission successfully, of course, the, they've also got to be able not only to open the doors, but to close them again. But we have... By for closure of the starboard door. They're talking about closing the yes. starboard door. That's this door on this right-hand side. You can see how far it actually swings open to get it completely out of the way. Now, if Bob Crippen had to go out there and, uh, and work these latches that are located in here, uh, it would certainly not be an easy task, but I think we've proved in the past that we have the ability to work outside the spacecraft. Certainly, the repair on Skylab uh, uh, will show that what uh, we can do uh, when we have to. Door is now closed. Okay, we now have the and door we closed. Have, uh, half a picture. Okay, we'll get the picture. Okay, I just got the, uh, the right door closed. All that came back nice. We'll get ready to lock it back up. I believe we may, we may be looking at the top of the doors. We'll have to decipher this picture uh, in a moment. Well, it looks more like an x-ray than anything else, doesn't it, at this point? <laughs> I don't think we've got it uh, right now. Well, you they... Go ahead, they, Gene, with your demonstration. They've got the starboard uh, door open and closed already. Okay, they've got it. Probably using the picture's looking good to us. Okay. You get a... They get a note of a little excitement in the crew, because uh, once they can open and close those doors, I think they feel that... Uh, that that their mission is, uh, is, is a success at that point in time. Uh, uh, some other experiments and operational tests are run, but basically when they get this done, they have proved that there is a capability uh, under the seat of the, that uh, spacecraft they're flying. That's our Crippen. You notice yeah. the things floating around in the weightlessness there, uh, Gene. Can you see? Uh, it's not a picture that is very clear to, uh, to many of us, uh, possibly to the technicians and the scientists uh, there in Houston. Uh, they can recognize everything. Well, I'm, I'm really searching for some movement, hoping that... Houston, I would like to verify that the DFI is in high sample. Hoping that we can see that, uh, that other door open. I believe this television camera, as we're showing here, is inside the cargo bay, which, of course, uh, would be a, a contained, uh, a closed compartment, uh, which is in zero gravity, certainly. There's still a few things floating Gee, around. Show all of the uh, bulkhead uh, latches closed now. They're now going up the center line. There are two sets of cameras right looking aft this way and looking forward from here. What they're doing is verifying now in mission control via, via telemetry that those latches have indeed closed uh, and uh, that will prove, uh, prove out the operation of that one single door. We can see the uh, interior wall there of the cargo bay up uh, on the right-hand side of the uh, picture give you an idea of the dimensions of it. It's quite big. Well, remember inside that cargo bay, it, you can carry something uh, equivalent. Houston, uh, we'd like to verify that the DFI is in high sample, please. You can uh, carry something uh, equivalent in size to uh, to two large, big passenger buses. High sample, I've got a great talk back at this time, like it's still running. 
Well, there's going to be a space lab in there, too, isn't there, Jim? Pardon? There will be a space lab in there, too. Yes, the there's, there's a joint, uh, yes. a joint European uh, United States uh, space laboratory that will be carried up on one of the later flights uh, with European uh, crew members uh, manning that laboratory, and that laboratory will fit inside that cargo bay door, inside the cargo bay. It, it covers the bulk of the fuselage or the body of the, uh, of the Columbia shuttle spacecraft. And there will be uh, plenty of opportunity for others uh, to take part in the, uh, in the space operations, really. Uh, they have the getaway specials for, what, as little as uh, $3,000. People can put tiny canisters on board.